Hi, you're listening to the Canada Abroad podcast, and I'm your host, Deanne Akers Luntz. Today, I'm going to be doing the weekly roundup of immigration news between May 26th and June 1st, 2024. The first thing that we're going to be discussing is the express entry draws that took place over the last week. So there was two different express entry draws that took place. The first one was exclusive to provincial nominees. And the second one that took place was exclusive to the Canadian experience class. The draw that took place for provincial nominees, they handed out a total of 2,985 invitations to apply, and you had to have a score of 676 or higher in order to be selected. And of course, you also had to have a provincial nomination that was tied to your express entry profile. Now, on the Friday, they did the draw for the Canadian experience class only. And in that draw, they handed out a total of 3,000 invitations to apply. And the comprehensive ranking system score that was required to receive an invitation to apply in that round was 522. So that is quite low compared to what we have seen lately. But given that it was a Canadian experience class draw only, it wasn't surprising that the score required was still quite high. Because if we look at all the people that are being selected in the general draws with these scores of 500 or higher, if you're a federal skilled worker, there's really no way to get up to a 500 unless you are bilingual. So you're speaking French and English and you have the approved tests for both on your profile, along with all of the education and work experience required. But for your typical federal skilled worker who speaks only one official language and does not have a job offer, they're just not going to get up to that 500 level. So it's not really surprising that we saw the Canadian experience class score be above 500 because most people who are in the Canadian experience class do have a score above 500. The next thing that we'll be looking at is the increase in the number of TRVs that will be issued to those affected in Gaza at the moment. IRCC announced that they would be increasing the number of TRVs that they would be issuing for those special measures. It was 1,000, but they've increased it to 5,000. And in order to be eligible for that special TRV, you have to be, um, well, the person in Gaza needs to be a relative of a Canadian citizen or permanent resident. And if they obtain the TRV, and as long as their passport and their biometrics are valid, when they enter, they can remain for up to three years on that temporary status. And once they arrive in Canada, they can apply for open work permits and study permits for while they're here over that three year period. They have noted in that memo that they obviously recognize that movement out of Gaza is not possible at the moment, but you can definitely um, assist your family members in applying for those visas so that once movement is possible, they will be able to travel over to Canada. Also, just to clarify, that special measure, in order to apply, the family member that is in Gaza at the moment, they have to be in possession of a Palestinian passport. Next up is Bill C-71. And what this is, it's a proposed bill that will extend Canadian citizenship to the second generation born abroad. This is quite an impactful piece of legislation if it passes. And the situation as it stands at the moment is if I have a child, so I was born in Canada, and let's say I have a child outside of Canada. I'm living overseas and my child is born there. They'll still be a Canadian citizen because I was born in Canada. But 
if they are outside of Canada when they give birth to their own child, that child, my grandchild, would not be a Canadian citizen. So this bill would be extending that citizenship to the second generation born abroad. Now, it's not in effect yet. I just want to clarify that because I've seen a lot of um, online news going around or gossip, as I say. And it hasn't been extended. It's a proposed bill at the moment. Once it goes into effect, uh, we will let you know. But as it stands right now, it is still limited to the first generation born abroad. But hopefully that will pass soon. And there will be lots of people out there that were not previously eligible for the Canadian citizenship who will now be able to get it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified when our newest episodes come out. We will be releasing the next roundup next Sunday, but during the week we will be also re releasing a mini episode relating to provincial nominations. Whoosh! <whistles>